Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 400, I think, and 15. And this is The Messy Middle. This is me recapping the summer. So if you missed last week, you might want to go and watch the last one, which I'll, I think it's going to be linked up up there. I think I can do a little card in YouTube <clears throat> so you can watch it if you missed it, or there'll be a link underneath. So today, I'm pretty much not showing you anything that I think is good. And I'm going to talk to you about some of the struggles that I went went through after just the burnout or almost on the verge of burnout, just kind of saying, um, I can't meet till the middle of September. That's what I felt like I kept saying, which I thought was so rude to so many people, but it was just like all I could do. So I had web stuff. I was just overwhelmed, overwhelmed, overwhelmed. And then um, uh, Mario has been one of my coaches for, I don't know, two or three or four years. I don't know. I'm terrible with math. Um, and then Anat, I worked with specifically. Of course, my husband's texting me now. I worked with Anat like from May to August. And it was really focusing on these big problems that I was having with art or with doing something for myself. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about. So it started in, and I'm sharing some of the slides I shared with Mindset Reboot, which is uh, Mario does a mindset conference, which is online, which is great. I always get a ton out of it. Um, and it, the piece that I talked about was just like getting through things. And what I realized when I was going through and making this deck this weekend and, and last night, I realized that there were so many things that I was hinting at in that talk or things that I needed to do. And that I did do starting in May. And, <clears throat> and so that was one of those things. This is the image that I think Anat would be like, this was the thing. And my friend, uh, Chris Martin, he was like, I like that. And Paul was like, I don't that one. And I'm like, this is not even a piece. This was me taking this little piece of black paper and using those. Remember those things I showed y'all last week, those little kid things that have comic sands on them. Right. But they're like, I know you probably can't see it good, but they're, they look like chapstick, but they're paint, they're tempura paint in these things. And I love them. And I definitely talk about them today. So I will hold some things up and show you, and I can show you them. I can flip out, I guess, if uh, if we need to. But I was just wanting to see if these quick sticks would, like how they would layer. And if I could, there was, there's a white quick stick and there's some metallic. And I wanted to see if they would, you know, be like gouache and you would be able to see them on black paper or if they would just, you know, like be a, like a marker that you can't really see. And I was just, I literally was just making a mess and that's what this black thing is. But that's why this is called the messy middle, because maybe you're like me, where I always think everything I do should come out perfect. And the first time, and this is not a good idea. It doesn't help me with my perfectionism or anything like that, right? So just to kind of recap, last week, I was drowning. I mean, not really last week, but like at the beginning, um, March, April, May, I was just overwhelming, overwhelming. And I felt like I was just kind of drowning. Just felt like it was really heavy. And I use that analogy a lot with a knot. Like, I just feel like I can't breathe. Like I'm in the ocean and I'm, yeah, I see a buoy. I'm pretty close to a buoy, but it's real choppy. And I, I'm, so I'm not that far away from land, you know, but anyway, I just felt like I was drowning. Just kind of a recap. So some of these slides are from my mindset reboot, <clears throat> just so you know. It's a great conference. Maybe Mario can put the link in the chat. Making a mess is hard for me. There were three things that I think I really discovered. And those were some of the things that I really worked on uh, with a knot. And then there's some things that I worked on with Mario. So I was working on them simultaneously. Um, I felt like the art stuff, um, it, it was it was a window to really what was going on inside, but I didn't see it like that. I think Anat probably saw that and Mario probably saw that. And I was making a lot of things, but making a mess is really hard for me. <clears throat> and I mean, you may see behind me, it's not super clean, but I think as a kid, I was very, very clean, very tidy. And I have certain things you'll see. Some of my spaces are really tidy. So this is not my space, but this is what it feels like. Making a mess feels like this. And I don't want to look like this. This isn't how I want to be 
um, seen or I don't want people to think of me like this, but this is kind of how I feel in my head. I think this is kind of the ADHD um, is that there's a lot of things going on. There may be some things that are potential, but there's also looks like there's some water damage and, you know, can I really um, get, can I really get this to be what I want it to be? Or is there any, any salvaging this? Like at this point, I'm like, nope, going to another room, going to another house. Like, I don't look at this and think, you know what? I think we can make something else. My husband would be like, we could fix that. We could get this for cheap and we could fix this. It's not usually, this mess is really t- turns me off. But what if we saw a mess like this? As a kid, or even now, I might go and make a mess, do something outside and get messy and dirty. Like when I pressure wash, like that's really fun because I'm, you know, cleaning something, I guess, or when I'm mowing, I'm getting dirty, but I'm, but it's fun to make a mess. It's more of a, of the experience that I'm looking forward to. So I saw these as two different things. One was like a kid. And then one was something that I, I don't, I actually avoid, or I, I don't um, spend time doing because of that. Making a mess is requirement of the desired outcome, meaning that I don't make bread. I know Mario makes bread. Some of y'all make bread probably, but um, you have to get your hands dirty and goopy. Like when I cook, like I'm going to have to get my hands yucky. And it's that is the messy part. I don't wear gloves, so I'm going to have to get messy. And I know that it's part of the process for cooking. I know it's part of the process for pressure washing. So I don't know why I really resist. And maybe it's because in our industry, we're so like precise and we have to have it perfect and it needs to look good. And it's all about kind of like how it looks that the messy part really, if I'm starting out messy, I'm not sure if I'll be able to rectify it. And then I was looking at stuff like this. This is not mine. It's good Auburn color, sort of more like uh, Florida colors, right, Amy? But this looked effortless and organic and it was just something oh hey jenna um it was just something that i i wanted it to i wanted to be able to make art like this and i had not spent time making art in a long time probably i mean i've spent time in my sketchbook but actually getting out of my sketchbook was really difficult and that was one of the challenges that i set for me so it felt like it was a dead end if you have this mess you throw it away. Right. And I also have a problem throwing things away. Like maybe I could use that or, um, you know, I'm this, this isn't worth nothing. I, I, I have trouble seeing worth and value. That's definitely stuff that Mario helps me with. So I had, so if you see this little thing, I bought this, these little things from creative market on the right, the little thing in white. I mean, this looks effortless. Like it's what it's like charcoal, like that's it. And I was like, this is the stuff I want to see. This is the stuff I want to make. And so I got out a big sheet of like this craft paper, like a oatmeal color or something. It, I think it was, anyway, it doesn't matter. Strathmore or something. And it was like drawing paper. And then I got this, what I thought was ink, you know, like, like dip pen ink. I thought it would be dark really dark black and it wasn't. And I was really upset about it. And Mario's like, well, can't you just go over it again? I mean, this is like in March. So I was starting to do certain things, but this was like, fail, fail. I can't even get this one black to be right. And now my friend Jody told me to get this other kind of black, but it's still, it's not just the perfect thing in the perfect stroke. There's so many times that this person Tiberian clits or something was making these marks. And then finally that's the one, but it's after all these other marks and that darkness that I wanted the, from just the richness of the black I wanted. And it was just felt like fail after fail after fail. And I was trying like these, I wanted these big marks. I didn't have a big enough brush probably. Um, I didn't have the right kind of ink. So I just, I ended up just making other marks on it. And then I ended up using the other side. So that was something that um, instead of throwing it away, I just turned it over and was like, well, maybe I can make something with the other side. And that ended up being one of those 
things that I figured out that made it not so precious. Like I could, I can mess this up. The other side's already messed up. You know, maybe I can make something that it took the pressure off. I don't know if that's how y'all feel at all. Um, but um, I use this one a little bit different in Mindset Reboot. But with this, with artist stuff, you know, I actually didn't share a lot because I was like, I don't want somebody to be thinking that I know what I'm doing or I think I know what I'm doing, right? Like um, Jesse, she got a degree in painting. Like I know she knows she's going to be like, you're not an artist. I know she's not really going to say that. But that's what I think. Like they know what they're doing and I don't. And I'm just trying and I'm just not getting where I wanted to. So there was just a ton of kind of like going from last week of drowning by being in my own, uh, putting myself in situations where I just felt like I was just struggling and struggling and struggling and over promising and under delivering. Right. Thank you, Jesse. I, I see that. <clears throat> she said she struggles with the same stuff. Um, you know, and I have a thing about being enough, like, well, that I need to be enough. I need to be good enough. Right. And <clears throat> we'll get into that to a little bit. Like, you can't do this. This is the stuff inside my head. You're not an artist. You're a designer, Diane. You know, you're going to be laughed at or maybe pitied. Like that's what, and still in the back of my head, I'm thinking, oh, these people are going to be like, well, it's not so bad, but I'm glad you have a job as a designer or a teacher, but you might not want to leave this on YouTube, Diane, or something. I don't know, you know, whatever. <clears throat> I always think of these <laughs> these people as this um like these knights that are coming after me in my head. I don't know why they're knights, but I like there's like a short person back there too. Um, but really, I realized I just have really unreasonable expectations. And and Anat used these three terms of, and I can't honestly not remember, I didn't bring my, that notebook, um, but it was pretty much like a, a really mean um, Mother Teresa. And it was like these, there was this good, but then it was terrible, right? Like there were these two parts of these these evil things inside my head, right? Um, <clears throat> or and maybe it's not evil, but it, it's not positive and it's not what God says about me. So it's definitely not, that is not what I should be seeing of myself. And so this was these unreasonable expectations and what I'm, and this is stuff Mario's worked with me for forever on. Hey D. um, is some of this this self-talk. So, all right. So I had huge high frustration because I'm alone. I'm not doing this. Um, I was sharing it with a few people, safe people, right? But I, I just thought I should be better. I was actually ashamed of some of the things. And this thing, this yucky um, thing, like I remember when I, I just was showing how the quick sticks worked and because I had no expectations. And I remember showing it to Paul and he's like, I like it. And I'm like, this, you know, it was like, it was that somebody else saw value other than just how the quick sticks worked and laid. I don't know. You know, maybe he was just happy that I was making a mess. Uh, Anat saw something, you know, that, like, but there was a lot, this is more of shame or retreating and feeling like making yourself small because I don't really know what I'm doing. And it's really hard to share stuff that you think people think you should know where you are. You should be further. Like if you say you teach art at a college, I should be able to do things better than this, right? You say you've been a designer for 20 years, 25 years, 13 years, 10 years, whatever. It feels like you should be able to do better than this, right? So there were all these mean things running through my head. And I just felt defeated. I thought this was a perfect image. It's like, can you imagine the Christmas tree? Right? It's like, nobody's even rushing out there to try to get it. It's like, uh, it's good enough. You know, like that tree wasn't good anyway. So these were regular occurrences. And I was battling with this. This was really a part of the battle. Again, we're talking about messy middle this week. So there will be, I think, some things that I'm proud of that I'll show you next week. But really, I'm not sharing almost anything that I like this week. I want to show you the yucky so that you realize you're not alone. Hopefully, Lord Jesus, no, let me be alone in this. So I really struggled with a couple of things. Wasting time is really difficult to me. So making a mess is difficult and hard. Wasting time. Anybody else? Hey, Rachel, happy late birthday. <clears throat> I think her birthday was Monday. Um, yes, I need to, Morris says, I need to drop the designer's mindset 
and let it go. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, Paul says, I think this is a great, great one. Um, it was a chance. I think it was a chance to see you unfiltered by perfectionism. There was no creative brief, no problem to solve. It was just having genuine childlike fun. And we could all use more than that. Absolutely, Paul. I think that I didn't have, it was that purposeless making. And that was something else. I also, I probably should have made a slide that said purposeless making is hard because that was really hard for me too. Wasting resources is hard, but I just feel like um, I could be doing something else. I've dealt with this like a lot and maybe you guys have too. I know my students do is, um, is that you try to just stay up later and get the thing done when actually Eric Coram, Dr. Eric Coram talks about with sleep is just going to bed. You're actually, your brain can, um, like close some of the synapses and actually you can have the problem solved. So I've really used that this summer and it really worked and it's been really good. I don't always um, not stay up, but it's been uh, effective. So I also just needed regular practice, which, you know, if you are trying to get better at blank, better at being a mom, better at being a husband, better at being an illustrator, better at being a photographer, better at being a manager, better at talking to your uh, clients, communication, whatever it is, how much time are you spending working and practicing at it? Well, if I wanted to ride my bike in a race, I would need to be practicing. I am not riding my bike in a race, but I also need grace and that just like, hey, this isn't for anything right now. You're doing, you're making progress today from yesterday. So during Mindset Reboot, I talked about what's worked in the past in my business. So I'm just really quickly, and I made up these numbers, but um, I think making products that you, I probably over the years have made 35 or more products. I mean, I've made soap and I've made lip balm and I've and packaging for all this cards. I've done probably way more than 35 and even just things like the podcast. So doing this and it, I've learned a lot about social media and marketing and connecting and all kinds of things that I didn't really expect, but I've been able to use in my, um, in my job. Well, I think that I've probably had 753 or more design or marketing experiments for clients because, you know, you're trying something new, you're presenting a new concept or you're presenting, and I us usually present more than one concept. So it's like, I'm always trying these things, but because I've done them on my own, it gives me the, I know that I could do them for somebody else, right? And I think you're probably the same way. Sorry about the where the mouse is. I kind of forget where it is sometimes. So I think exploring can be scary. I am a huge adventurer when we're going out in the woods and hiking. I love doing that. I love thrifting or going um, junking or anything like that. Um, but I really love being out in nature and hiking. That's not super scary for me, but making a mess is really exploring where I'm not comfortable. So you need to expect to fall, just like if you are climbing through a rope climb or something, right? I needed to expect to make messes. Like, what is this piece? This is like washi tape and a piece of like a book from... Um, Italy, and then this tiny little watercolor thing that looked like a bird, but it was also like um, stained glass, like, and all these number fours, like, I don't know, what, what, what was I doing? Like, these don't really go together. Um, and I didn't ever think this was a finished piece. It was just me making a mess and I was okay with that. But it didn't, again, it was purposeless, right? <laughs> but I'm flawed. I'm not flawless. Um, and oh goodness, I forgot to change the bottom. Oh, let's go past this one quick. So why do I struggle when I'm creating something? So this is like red tape, like masking tape. And I just put it together and then I drew in it. And it's not great, but I like some parts of it. I like how I cut that little kid off, you know, and then I love that stamp. I love stamps. And, you know, there's some watercolor at the bottom. But it's like, why can't I experiment with these things instead of feeling like it had to be beautiful? So this is what my, if you want to know what I'm looking at when I'm at home, if you're talking to me, then this is what I look at. I have a bunch of um, 
uh, Jane's Birds, which I absolutely love. And I have some other paintings of hers. And then I have Amina Khalili, um, the little thing that says new corset. But my desk is pretty clean and uh, there's everything kind of has a place. But then my art table, yikes, Ooh, it's pretty messy. This was in March. I did clean it up and it is continuously clean pretty much now um, because I have a system, but I had to go through the whole summer trying different things that were helping me to have a system. But I have a, had a bad relationship with my art table. It had too many expectations for me. And I don't know if you have a place like that um, or not, uh, or something that is like, well, if you clear off the kitchen table, then you've got to make something good right? Because all the time that it takes or how much space you're taking up from other things, especially if you don't have place for that. So this, I mean, this is pretty organized and this is how it stays. Like my resources are a plenty and they're very organized. This is how I like to think of myself and lots of things that I am the only one in control of are like this. And this is kind of what it was like growing up. For me, this is what I did. Not my mom didn't make me do this, but this is how, I guess it was just the ADHD. It helped me. And I like things in order. Granted, clearly not that much because if you look behind me, but these are things that I bought uh, at the beginning of the, I don't know, beginning of the year. And I put them together and then I got another one, big one to put my art in. So Mario talked about this in 2020 um, at camp. It was the very, no, 2021 at camp and he always does the first talk and it was about prep procrastination well i think me putting all these things together and me organizing all my paints and all my whatevers or me buying new materials when i don't really need materials that's prep procrastination right it's just making me it makes me feel like i'm doing something towards the more art less art supplies yes absolutely mario but that's what that's what i needed i needed somebody to say you're just procrastinating you're just you you're just procrastinating on this thing you need to just get busy making but the making was really hard because i didn't want to make something ugly right i didn't want to waste materials i didn't want to waste time but if i'm not trying aren't i wasting my talents and skills that god's blessed me with that's what i think right so then there's this other kind of heavier thing in the back of my mind this was me taking a whole bunch of sketchbooks and looking and seeing, you know, because I'm comfortable in sketchbooks, but I wasn't always comfortable in sketchbooks. So these are my sketchbooks. The ones on the left side are are filled. And then the ones that are in plastic, clearly, I haven't done those. But the Illo sketchbook, my absolute favorite. That is, they have good thick paper. It takes water, just so you know. It's my favorite. <clears throat> the Plum Chesters are okay, but clearly the Illos, that's what I asked for for Christmas from my parents. And they're like $16 and it's an eight by eight. Anyway, they're my favorite. The other ones are things that I write in. They're from Walmart. So one thing that works for me is distraction. Go figure, the ADHD kid does well in distraction. I actually am less in my head when I am watching TV and I'm making something or I'm listening to something and I'm just making, right? I'm not, even when I'm just thinking about a website I'm trying to design and I'm over there doing something like I need that some sort of distraction because the internal voices are pretty loud. So I draw a lot at church. Um, I'm sure that the pastor was not talking about ham radio, but I drew a ham radio and I use watercolor pencils because they're easy and then just a water brush. I think it's funny, but nobody's saying anything in the chat. Okay, thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. Um, and then I iterate. I iterate a lot. I draw the same thing over and over in different ways. So Obviously, the little tape girl is the exact same thing, but I draw faces a lot. I This was like one page that I was kind of drawing the same sort of person's nose or like tiny dots for eyes or, you know, it was just going, um, I'm just iterating on the same thing and I'll do tons of noses, tons of things. So this was like, I liked this dog. I was trying to draw my cat. There's a couple, three, three cats in there and then maybe more, but then I found that little or I drew that dog and then I was like okay I'm going to iterate on it I'm going to make it a little bit better and I liked that so this is in 2018 right the other thing is I always have a sketchbook close by and this summer I had four sketchbooks close by four 
at all times, I was carrying four sketchbooks. One was really small. I'll show you. Um, one was uh, half. Anyway, I'll show you in a minute. This is another at church, so I have to listen to the sermon twice. I don't have to, I guess, but I am doing the like the projector things, and so I'm listening to it twice. And so I will, I'll take notes during the first one, and then I don't during the next. Right? I, I do my part, but usually the guy has a clicker, so we're our girl, whoever's preaching. Um, and then my animation um, professor friend um, has. Thank you, John. Um, ha told me to all my faces were kind of just face forward. And so he's like, why don't you do paper? But he told me to do these cones and then put faces in different ways. So this was another iteration. And you'll just see random. Do you see this nose? It's like random nose. I have a whole bunch of I will almost always have lips because I don't want anybody to think that I'm drawing a pee pee. I don't know why. I'm really scared about that. But I don't even think I've ever drawn a PB, but whatever. This um, this was me iterating during a faculty meeting, like a whole university faculty meeting. I just drew a whole bunch of yarn, um, yarn balls. These are just in my sketchbook. Again, this is probably me watching TV, so I'm not really thinking about things, and I'm able to just kind of make and then iterate. Because I think, so for me, iteration is taking something, okay, hey, I think this works. Let me use a different tool. Let me try a different technique. Like, I really like this little guy with no mouth. I draw a cat like this too. I don't know if I saw it somewhere, and then I've just taken it. But like, this guy is from those big loopy things from church that I drew. So there's certain things I'm going back and then I'm iterating and I'm making them into something else. Those are some creepy hands, just so you know. And then sometimes this, I would never do this look like this if I wasn't distracted because it's really messy to me. Um, so using multiple, so it was probably during fall. <laughs> there's Alabama, there's Auburn, and there's uh Georgia. So I'm watching football, right? And um, and I'm trying to just do things with different pens and work on my lettering. And then sometimes I have these tiny little drawings on certain things that I like and I just cut out. And I, I mean, this is tiny. This is really small, probably like three quarters of an inch, that little bird that's taped in. <clears throat> and then sometimes, um, so I write down something that maybe the pastor had said or something. And then I have, you know, the brackets, like the curly brackets. Um, I draw people with curly brackets. I always think this is Doc Reed, sort of, that reminds me of, hey, Brian, Brian Bundy, I see you in Cleveland. Um, so this guy is a bracket guy. Oh, I don't know where my mouse is now. Let's see. This guy is a bracket. See the bracket? Um, and then there's two people up here that are brackets. So, so this is where reflecting, going back to your sketchbooks and then looking for things that maybe you didn't think were good at the time. I actually think there's really important part about having time away and then coming back and look at it because sometimes the things that we are seeing aren't so great in the beginning, right? Um, so I um, so mining the gold is about reflecting, going back, looking and seeing what really was good. So to me, I really liked these people. These are bracket people, right? So again, I'm trying not to draw people just from the front, right? And I don't really know why I made their the whole their nostrils so like a different color. It looks like he has a mustache and maybe she does too. Anyway, so I wanted to share some of my go-to exercises. These are some of the ones that I go to that I can do at night. You could do them in the beginning. You can do them um, anytime, really when you're starting your art. So to me, again, not um, these aren't for anything. Maybe you can cut them up and use them later, but I start with easy. <laughs> and to me, just making marks. So getting out some brushes. Look, these are like old, these are pieces of paper some kid has ruined. Um, they didn't print it the right size or they had too many or they printed on the wrong paper. So I just have stacks and stacks of paper that's already been used on one side. And then Again, I'm not going to use this for a final piece, right? But I can scan it in. But these are just brushes and I turn, like dip them in ink and then I just dip it down or just making marks with different brushes. The circle ones, which I really love, are are just uh, me turning the brush, like a regular flat brush in a circle. I think that's just fun. Again, maybe there's something you can use that with 
you might see something, but if you don't keep it, then you're def definitely not going to see it. I also make marks not on white paper. I don't know why I have two of my footers there, but <clears throat> I like this one, just the texture. Again, not super dark, but maybe it's just that texture. It always reminds me of Vaughn has a book that is like a uh, texture and putting that in. It reminds me of something like Retro Supply would do, or I know Vaughn has that whole book, um, a book series. If you don't know it, I have it at home. Um, and then I make blobs. Sometimes I make blobs at night. So if you don't know, I just make sheets of watercolors of just blobs and I try not to do anything. And then I let them dry and then I start the next day with blobs. I have some blobs. If you want some blobs, there'll be a link uh, down below. So this, these are some things that I've made with the blob sheets. And sometimes we've done these together. So I know Amy Lynn did this with me. Paul did this with me. And it was funny. It's funny because we don't all see the same thing. This is what I love about doing this in community is that God made us all in a way that we see different things. And normally we're like always comparing and it's bad. Like I'm not as good as Amy Lyons, right? And then but when we do this, it's like, oh, wow, me and Paul both with this little red lady, we both got like a little babishka woman with a scarf or we got somebody with a scarf, both of us. Right, Paul? Do you remember? Um, but these are things where it's like we're t we're similar, but then we also are so different. Like nobody got a little snow pea man, right? Except me. And I don't know what this monster is, but I think he's cute, right? So. That's one thing. I do blobs. So I've recently made a new little um, calendar. And so I put space in my calendar on the right hand side, on some pages on the left hand side. And like this guy who doesn't have ears, he has legs. Again, maybe it's just my weirdness. I've never done any drugs, but I think this is fun that we can just take something and go. And this was kind of at the beginning, this green and blue was at the beginning of the summer. And I just really like this little character. And I think this little guy is so sad, but I like him and I like how the tail, I don't normally combine two things together, but because I did this as a group thing um, earlier in the year at some point, Amy Lynn had actually drawn something that was like that, where it was, she used one blob for an arm and another blob for the hat and the other blob for the body. And I was like, I hadn't thought about that. So again, I love doing things together with other people. And I don't always finish every page. Sometimes it gives me something to go back to, but this is actually a good warm up. It doesn't take very long and I don't feel wrong about it. I actually always usually feel like I'm good. Like I found something. So, and now all I can see here is this looks like a body with like really pointy boobs, but whatever. Okay, and then here's some more. This is like one of my favorite ones, this elephant man. I really like him. I like him. You can see the things that I like because I have hearts next to him. I kind of like him. I have him as a sticker. So he's like the little, I guess he was my fave, it says. Um, he was like muskrat man because he sort of looks like a rat, but he's got like a hunting jacket on, like plaid. And then sometimes I'm like, I can't make anything but a blah, blah, you know, blob out of this. This guy is like... He looks like somebody on TV that has like, maybe it's, um, who was that guy on the radio and he always had long curly hair, black hair. He was in New York. Anyway, I don't know. Whatever. The end. We're going to keep going. Yes. Howard Stern. Thank you. Collage and rocks. I do think collage rocks. Woohoo. Go collage. But I tend to go back to things. So if I'm feeling uncomfortable, at least I can draw a rock. You know, is really what I think. And so these were some that I did at the beginning of the summer. Um, these are inside of envelopes, the blue and white one. So I just drew on them and then I, you know, I had drawn ink, I think, on the other thing and then kind of do it a negative, you know, and I'm just playing and I just had to for force myself to be uncomfortable. One of my challenges this summer was not working in my sketchbook, which, which I did work in my sketchbook, but I really needed to practice working on paper. And I went to an art retreat or whatever art conference, and I had to work bigger, and it was the ugliest thing I've made. I will I will show that next week because I didn't have a picture that I could show because I loved it. Anyway, this is the sketchbook. So it's a tiny little sketchbook, right? Um, and I had, unfortunately, ruined 
um, because I had painted this blue on this side, the paper in the sketchbook. I think it's like travel journal or something. But I had, whoop, there we go. I had, see, this is really pretty small. That's why I show my finger to show I'm working really small lots of times. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to use paper that's small. I'm not going to make huge things, but I made a sketch. This works well for me when I make a sketch. I said, okay, I'm going to use one or two colors. And then I this, this one right here was the pack. You know, the communication arts that you get, you know, your magazine, and it comes with like a piece of paper that has your address on it. Well, I just used the other side of that. So I was like, well, we'll see what this like is like. And then I just used a really small piece of um, so it did the same thing kind of twice in two different ways. And it was based on a Bible verse, you know, uh, I think it says, trust the God of the breakthroughs." Maybe it was a song, but based on a Bible verse, trust the God of the breakthroughs, the one who rolled the stone away. So it must've been near Easter or I don't know, maybe it was just listening to Easter -y songs. Um, and then just changing it a little and using more hyper colors, like this one pen that I have. Again, I'm just trying out some new things with things that I'm comfortable. I'm drawing rocks. You can't be like, that's not a rock, right? And then collaging broken pieces um, is something that, you know, you're just going to throw it away. So who cares, right? So this was like a tent from something and then it, in a magazine. And then I just thought this maybe could be his mouth, the red stuff. And then this was just cut out from something else. So it was kind of like left over. So I was like, well, I'm going to try to make, because th these were rocks, I think, these white circles. So I just made them into eyes and then I cut little um, shoes out. But the shoes were really over here from this piece of cutout. So then from that, I made a penguin. Again, cutouts after cutouts, right? Not that anything is great, but I'm just playing and I'm doing something with the discards. So this is just an opportunity for laughter, just in case you weren't having enough fun. Sometimes I see people like this guy was at a conference. This piece was behind him and I was sitting in such a spot that I was like, oh my God, I got to take a picture of this. I don't know who this man is, but I took this picture in a hotel lobby. And then this one is a friend of mine in the UK who was not greatly positioned in front of a, p a painting or a photo. Um, it was in a webinar. I didn't know this lady, but I knew the lady given the webinar. Anyway, I, I just think this is funny. So I take screenshots or pictures of people watch out if you're near me that was the comedic part of the show um <clears throat> i'm glad you guys laughed um <laughs> wasting resources is really really difficult it's not as difficult if they're not expensive and they're for kids because there's not the value of them oh i can't use my really nice watercolors i need to make you know i can use the crappy things while i'm learning or whatever but really you need to practice with the good stuff to be honest, so that you can, I know, now you can really see the comic sans. Oh, we'll get off this one. So then here's the messy piece that Paul was like, I like it. And Anat was like, I like this. And I'm still, I told Anat I would send it to you. So I'm, I still, I'm absolutely happy to send this to you. Um, but this was this messy. I was just seeing how the tools worked. The end. That was all it was. I wasn't trying to make anything. I just wanted to see how the tools worked, what kind of things I could get and see if I could layer them. That was it. But maybe it was just this being okay with just making a mess. Okay. So this is another, these are the uglies, right? The messy middles. I'm like, I'm just going to, the little red things are tape. I don't know what the, I think the blue, like green, blue kind of things are, um, just pieces of paper that I glued on. And then this, of course, looks like the inside of an envelope. So I made some, you know, collage clouds or whatever. And then I just, I guess I was using one of those quick sticks and I was just making a mess, seeing if it would go over it. So who cares? And then this one's like doo-doo brown. I'm for sure starting out making a mess because I picked brown, a doo-doo brown color as my color. I don't like this piece. I did bring this. I, I have these. I can show you. And it's really kind of more, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's like fluorescent a little bit. It is ugly. Doo-doo brown works. Yes. And maybe. 
Then I loved this. I didn't expect anything out of this, but this was just me putting the quick sticks down and see. So I had a fluorescent and then I did the red. And then I realized I really like this because I got a different tool. I left those pink and red blobs on the sheet of paper that wasn't white. I really believe in not using just white paper. And this is like a brown paper. And then I just started playing and I did a ton of these iterations of these flowers, but I really, really liked those. Um, so I guess I should one thing I liked. So, but what if it sucks like this, right? But I wasn't expecting anything here. Well, I'm going to show you some stuff that sucks. Um, and I used the other side. So this is one example of, I ended up cutting this up into little pieces. And I think I use it for, I don't remember, but I was just playing. I was using this new like ink that I had. It wasn't new. I just hadn't used it in a while. So it was new to me, I guess. And just doing a whole bunch of stuff. It was way too much. It was way too overworked. And I ended up putting yellow on it. I it, I just started making a mess and I over, it was terrible. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to see if I can really layer and put like, um, so I just taped it down to my helix mat on my art table. And I just started um, painting on top of it, watercolor and some of the quick sticks. And I drew a girl from the Land's Inn catalog. I mean, I wasn't going for anything great here. And then I realized she's not proportional. So I abandon it at this point. I'm like, I can't make this work. And I, this normally would really, like, I don't think her arm is correct. Like, it's not so bad, but it's bad, right? I was like, I'm cutting it up. And I did, I cut it up. So, okay. So I have wasted materials, but maybe I learned something. I learned that I need to work better about proportions or I learned other things. So literally materials spilled. And I have this pulled up, pulled up like it's a, anyway. So this is the materials or this is what it was. It was this brown and it was next to this blue and it made this awesome brown. And I made corn. Again, I am drawing in the dark, not total dark, but we only have like one lamp in our family room. So when we're watching TV, that lamp is not even near me. So I'm not like, I can't be too precious with it, but I really like some of these. So this is this brown plus this blue made this kind of gray. Yeah, it is. It's corn, right? Or maize, I guess it could be either one. Um, but I just started making and I don't think it really looks like corn like this part doesn't but this part looks okay I mean I don't think it's that color but then what if I'm another thing I have issues with that I have problems with is that I'm wasting my talent or skills or superpowers that God's gifted me with this should be the hardest thing but really this was something I was struggling with just as a Christian that this wasn't what I struggled with the most. This That was hard to kind of realize and live under, I guess, in four minutes. Let's see. Something I can do, balance with something that I'm learning because I need something that I feel good about, like I can move forward. I don't need it all to just be learning, learning, learning. You suck, you suck, you suck kind of thing. So, I was trying to learn gouache. I still am. I haven't practiced with it as much as I need to, but I was just doing some main ba basic exercises that like they were talking on Skillshare. So they just list it out and then you put some marks on top of, um, uh, on, and you could do with brushes uh, or I use, was using like a white pen and a black pen and, uh, you know, silver, I think. I was just trying to see what my colors look like and um, and then what, you know, again, just making a mess. And then I did this, uh, my friend, Sandy Hester, who I can't wait for you guys. To, she's going to be on in October. I don't know which week yet, but um, she does blind contours. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do these. I just am watching her. I pause it or I'm just watching her and I just try to draw it quickly. So these are, <laughs> these don't really look like Sandy Hester, right? But without... I don't know if I was not pulling my hand up, but I wasn't looking down at the at the drawing. Maybe you do new tool Tuesday. And every Tuesday you start, you say, I'm going to start the day with a new tool and just do something. I think something like that could be fun too. So my quick sticks, I really like these little girls. I shouldn't probably have showed you today um, because I really like her. And I said I was going to do all messy metals, but I did make a lot. 
And Mario did tell me that this one looks better in person than it does on the screen. But here it, I have black paper in one of these sketchbooks. And I just put these colored pencils that I had gotten on it. And I, I was just making a happy boat, right? And I made other happy things. And then this is gouache on an old drawing of rocks because I was just trying to mix the, you know, see what works and what doesn't. So this is some more gouache again. This is, hi, this is not what a palm tree looked like. I know, I know it's terrible, but I'm playing with weird colors and just trying. These are like first attempts at gouache. So I thought I would take you all the way through one tree. Now, I'm not really good at waiting, right, till it dries. Ooh, I really suck at that. But look at, so there's, it goes from this beauty of gouache is that you can, um, it's stylized. That's right, Amy, it's a stylized palm tree. These are stylized trees also. Um, and then I'm using blue, a very limited color palette, blue, brown, green, and then I'm, I don't know, and then that red color. And then I, I think I put some, purple I think they're in anyway but the, I think the last one yeah that the one on the right is the last one which again not great but I'm like not good at figuring out shadows or you know so it's like I was just coming back to it in the day and it's just I'm learning and these are small you can see how big my thumb is so I'm not expecting these but I ended up not liking these spots on the trunk so I just covered them over right why can't we cover it over I don't know why I have such trouble with this. And then I started using things that were huge because I was like, I am not comfortable with this. So these chairs are made with that big brush. And it's like, it was forcing me to just make a few marks, but I really, really loved these, right? So I limited my palette starting at the, well, I don't know how long I'll be limiting my palette, but I haven't done enough work because I'm still working on my taxes and anyway, in school and everything. But um, I'm limiting my palette for a, a number. It's not super limited. I'm going to show you the palette. That's why there's the asterisk. So people are going to be like, that's limited. I don't think that's limited. Anyway, I made this mess. This, this guy's here somewhere as well. I brought everything so I could show you what I could. But this little bird, and again, I'm just playing, seeing how the tools worked in the palette. Because what I ended up doing was this was the palette. And I know it's sideways. The reason I wanted to show you sideways, because I just wanted to show you what um, the colors I was using. I was, had just four colors in the beginning, which are the four colors on the far right. Okay, so they're your, whatever, you're right. This is the top. Well, these two, right? These two colors make this. These two colors make this. These two colors make this. And then I added this like pink beige and then this other beige. And then I realized that all these colors down here are made by mixing these in some way. Not even the beiges, but I got a green. So I was like, I'm going to add a green color because I thought I needed something. So this next page which is the next page on this, is I just decided to take all the tools that I have, I have them separated by what they are, like colored pencils or whatever. And I just went through and I picked ones that were in that same color palette. So now I have multiple mixed media and I'm only carrying around that those things in these little bags, these colors, nothing that's outside of my color palette, right? The color palette that was on the other sheet on the other page is there. I did do this one too. This is just, again, me playing. Uh, it doesn't have a, I don't think it has an up or down yet. But again, these are the colors that I'm working with. You'll see that I hopefully will do more of these. This is a tiny little thing. I'm, I'm really not so great at contrast. So again, I'm trying to work on those things. So I did a little bit of collage and I had this really dark thing is really hard for me. So having the two pieces of contrast. This is way too busy. But anyway, and then this one, contrast in shape, but also color, right? And this is, remember last week I showed you that blue and that a terracotta color, and then it made that kind of green. This is the green. I just freaking loved that green. And so I just went crazy with it. And again, mixed media, I'm just, these aren't for anything. These aren't expected to be end pieces, but I'm just trying one to work on paper so that it has crisp edges, not just in my sketchbook. I'm trying 
to see what it's like just to play on paper. Um, I also know that I probably do better if I sketch first, but I also sometimes just don't want to sketch. So another way, if you are like me and you are just hitting a blank page and you don't want to do that, you can swatch out your tools. So this is something else. So very similar to that other swatch page with the gouache. Um, another teacher online, I think her name's Kate. I don't remember what her last name is. Um, I can get it for you. I'll put it in the chat or in the thing underneath um, description. Um, but this, I all the marks that your filbert brush can make. And so then I just went crazy with it. And then I ended up doing all the brushes that I had I, and I put holes in them and then I put them on a little shower ring. So I have it hanging in my uh, studio so that I can go back and look and see if I need to make a mark uh, and what, what mark. So then this is Debbie Clapper's. Um, if you want awesome art, that's um, a great one. Great artist. And then this is ink. These are gelatos. These are Lyra aquarelle crayons. These are those quick sticks. This is watercolor. This is a certain kind of watercolor. This is another quick stick. Derwent drawing pencils, another watercolor. Other marabou art crayons and king art art crayons. This is more um, another kind of watercolor. And so these things, just doing this, knowing what my colors were, I can just go to this and just pull what I need, right? This makes it much easier. The reason I have the blue, the black line is because I want to see if it's transparent or if it's opaque. And lots of things like with the quick sticks, pretty, pretty transparent. But there's some things that are more opaque than I would have thought. Like this terracotta is more opaque than I thought. Um but a lot of them are pretty transparent. But I do that usually with almost everything. There's a black line or I paint over the uh, text or something, especially with the inks because they, I tend to not know. And you kind of need to know if it's opaque or not. I also make things with the leftovers. I'll show you one thing. So I really like this little guy, um, but this was like from something else. This was a cutout leftover. So I ended up making... <laughs> I made three things. So this is how tiny he is. Yep, it's a rooster. And then there was a bathing suit. It was really just this. And then I added the this. And then I made this scary guy. I know it's really small. Sorry, you can't really see. Um, but I didn't put pictures of all those things because I don't know why. So make some messy middles. I mean, it's a lot of mess. A lot of mess. A lot of mess. But then having fun with some things... I mean, things don't work. Um, I tried to pull. I mean, I make a lot of messes. A lot of things like this is creepy that I made the lips now into this weird, creepy character. A bathtub and a whole bunch of eyes. What? Okay. Um, there's noses. I Again, there's one really big nose I'll show you that one and this is the quick sticks right and lips and rocks i don't know what that is scribble but i don't know just i mean that's really big that's a that nose and mouth is as big as my head anyway you got to make some messes i got to make some messes everything isn't good or perfect i'm just making marks um some things are scary and are ugly. And then um, I did something with Mora and Amy um, Hassenjager and John Ingalls. And I had taken this pr pretty picture, I thought, of uh, my magnolia tree. And it was just the colors were amazing. So I sent it to them. And then I was like, I'm going to do something with this. And then Amy ended up doing, we all ended up doing something with it. We all made a drawing, but Amy ended up then making a painting and it was amazing. But this was my attempt. So with the quick sticks and maybe some gelatos, which are water soluble. But for me, I was like, it's ugly and I like it. I'm okay with it. Um, there's lots of ugly, 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 ugly things. Um, I think that, anyway, I don't, I think I had a few more things marked over here and then I'll let you go. Of course, you can go whenever you want. It's your time. Um, I already showed you that my things that spilled. And then I did, um, this is working backwards a little bit, but I just wanted to show you ugly, 
ugly things. Like, I I don't mind this, but what the heck? Uh, okay. And then this guy, creepy. Creepy. Um, there are some good things. Um, she, I thought this was not so great, right? I guess I was watching something with Gordon Ramsay. I like this page. Okay. Not really this one, but I'm not showing that today, but like, I just don't even like the G's. This flower looks weird. Like something's wrong with it. Um, I made a lot of backgrounds. I mean, but look, like there's lots of things in my sketchbook that I don't like. I tend to do this sometimes, like put these black lines around. I don't know. I just see it as something that I do regularly and maybe, um, I mean, and everything doesn't make sense, you know, like, I don't know. What the heck was I doing? This, this guy was probably not a guy in the beginning, but I gave him, I don't even know what it was. It was a shirt, I think. And then, but I liked that little guy. He's cute. Um, so there's going to be some things that you like. I really like this guy, but he's, he would probably be in my things I liked, but, um, Marks I tend to make to add abstracts uh, to put on Adele auditioning sheets. So I was just making a whole bunch. Here's the one. She kind of looks weird, but I really like her. I shouldn't have shown you her today. But then these are just out of my head. Doesn't she look like the 80s? Kind of like my hair today. And then these people. The, the two ladies are quick sticks. The others are um, something. I d hated these. Oh, hate these girls. These are gelatos. Ugh. Hate them. Oh, and then this was in the beginning. And it's really, I don't like the way it feels, but it has some envelopes and it has some other like paper things. It's kind of hard to see. I'm sorry. Um, but it's just a whole bunch of mess. And I really don't like it, but it's the messy middle. Next week, um, I like the red and blue too, um, but there are just lots of things I didn't. But I was going through, so here was that piece, right? ugly that's okay um you'll see some more next week oh here's this guy it kind of looks like that could be his tail feather i don't know um lots of messy middles i really i didn't think i was gonna like this white black graph and craft but i ended up making oh here's those people a little guy and maybe the other guys on the next page nope that page. I thought he was cute. Um, but I like the craft paper. I didn't know I was going to like the black paper. I just used the, the graph paper for taking notes for clients. I still haven't finished. Oh, here's an ugly. Look at that. That thing is creepy. It's like John ate grits or something or oatmeal. That's creepy. Eh, oh, well, um, I just made a lot of mess. Made a lot of mess. Quick sticks. Do they work? Neon pens. But see, I kind of liked that one. Anyway, swatch things out. Swatch things out on black. Um, everything doesn't work. I mean, some of these are terrible. I have a man woman um, that I wish she, I, w I wish I hadn't messed it up. <laughs> I put her lips. It's terrible. I don't, I mean, oh. I'm just trying plain. Anyway, this this one is called Ooly O O L Y dot com. This one, but I did really enjoy it. It's not probably good enough for watercolor. These are pasted in or taped in or something, but it kind of buckled a good bit in the blobs. So that one wasn't wasn't so great, but it was good for ink or the quick sticks, not ink, um, just like marker were those things which kind of liked those oh i really i ended up making this one. Oh, i'm not supposed to show you the good well i didn't look how cute he is and then i kind of made like a i don't know but this was one of those things but then i put like what if i put two eyes again this happens when you iterate because we just need to iterate we need to make i haven't finished this one this one then i always feel like see i can draw a chair because I have that worry but there are some there are some things that I don't really like next week but there are some things that I am proud of 
and I can't wait to show you. But this week, messy middle. It's kind of abandoned. Kind of like my hair today. Like if I took my thing out, it would still be in the same shape. Exact same shape. I'll show you one other thing to get you to maybe come back next week. So this is, I did this yesterday, just been trying to clean up. So I'm trying to make a tree. Something's wrong with the, the sticky. Anyway, but this, I made a few again in the dark and playing with whatever. And this one I like, there's something neat over here, but there's something nice about this. It has some silver in it. Oh, you can't really see the end. White, black, graft, craft sketchbook is by uli.com yeah yeah awesome okay thank you guys thank you thank you for coming and um man brian yan i'd like to see what you've made in your uli um okay oh i just spit all over my keyboard okay i will see you next week and i'm gonna do a blob challenge that you could do with me every day for a month probably starting near the end of september because I don't need to start right at October 1st, but it's just one little, one little blob a day. And then you can, you'll can download the sheet for the week. So hopefully that'll be fun and we can do that together. And I'll see you next week. I definitely need some water. The end. <laughs>